To get us started off with, Jamie, tell us tell us a little bit about uh, Boutique Sh Guitar Showcase. Yeah, sure. The Boutique Guitar Showcase uh, shows unique world-class instruments mm -hmm. from guitar makers from around the world. Um, it started off as a NAMM show initiative. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know the NAMM show, it's the world's largest musical instrument show for manufacturers and industry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, NAMM thought that they could be finding a better way to work with these small guitar makers who have different needs than the large industrial companies like Gibson or right. Taylor or something. Right. Uh, and so they, uh, in corporate speak, they look for a subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. And that led them to me. And uh, so I designed a portion of the show made a special environment that's conducive for small guitar makers and showing their special instruments. Yes. And in that first year, that was back in 2016. 2016. Yeah, in, in the first year of the 2017 January show, uh, a lot of the retailers came into the space and said, Jamie, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. And honestly, we haven't been excited like this in quite a while. Mm -hmm. And so can you help us bring that feeling into our store? Good. Uh, and that was the birth of the Boutique Guitar Showcase Tours. And now we're in our third year and this year's tour will be 24 events in 10 countries. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're just at the beginning. We're at the fourth event, mm -hmm. uh, and we still have another 10 to do in the US Yeah. Uh, before we head to Europe and do another nine countries there. Absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, so when, so you're, you're featuring these innovative works of, of guitar. Tell, tech, talk to us about the vision. What, what, do you, what are we trying to accomplish here with Boutique Guitar Showcase? Well, really, I'm trying to show what is happening with guitar makers today. Yeah. So by the time most guitar players see the guitar, often the innovation is already decades old. Yeah. Um, because for it to show up in guitar shops around the world, usually it's a long process of the company growing and developing, meeting some artists who end up playing them on a stage and, yeah. and before they become part of the, the public consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, and so music stores are full of innovations from the 1930s, from the 1950s, 1985, you yeah. know. Um, but guitar makers are doing interesting and uh, often innovative. This isn't all about innovation, but often uh, innovative things today. And the guitar continues to evolve. It's the people's instrument. Yeah. The guitar will always evolve. As long yeah. as people are here and continuing to change, which is a human feature, yeah. the guitar will continue to change. And so this sort of gets you ahead of the curve right. uh, to see what's happening in real time. Yeah. So these builders, they're, they're experimenting with the, the form of the guitar, mm. uh, the function, how the different, uh, uh, how a guitar can interact with um, uh, amps and with sound and with, with just the craft of making. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about this crazy instrument uh, that you have in your hands. Yeah, I often talk about this guitar first um, because it's such a departure from what we think we know about the guitar, mm -hmm. but yet it proves and disproves everything that we know about the guitar. To understand the Teufel Birdfish is to understand all guitars. This guitar is a form follows function design. Mm -hmm. And it's said a lot, but most people don't really understand what it means. Mm -hmm. And a form follows function design means that you determine what something must do, no more, no mm -hmm. less, mm -hmm. and the form will reveal itself. Mm -hmm. So what must a guitar have? Mm -hmm. It has to have strings, right. string instrument. Right. We pluck it, move it, use a bow, whatever it is. We get the string moving, mm -hmm. and that's where it all starts. Mm -hmm. We interact with that string, changing notes by making the string shorter and longer. Yeah. And so to be able to do so, we have to press it up against something. And so the fretboard and neck are clearly important. Right. However, the headstock, which is in most guitars, mm -hmm. was really just a a way of being able to to change the tension on the string, which at the time was a slab of wood with some holes in it and some tapered pegs, yeah. you know, back in Antonio Torres' day. Yeah. Um, and that we've evolved a lot since then. Yeah. And so maybe the headstock is not a necessary part of changing the tension of the string. Mm -hmm. It's not here. Mm -hmm. And so where we go with this string tension and the moving string energy normally into a body, but the body of a guitar can be, well, it can be like an acoustic guitar, it can be spruce and rosewood or mahogany, it can mm -hmm. be hollow. It can be solid with wood, it can be aluminum, lucite. I mean, really, sky's the limit as right, far as right. the body. So what's the body doing? Mm -hmm. The body is doing what we call the tone. Of course, tone is not a scientific term. It's kind of a mythological description of how the sound we perceive it, right? Yeah. Um, and when we change that body, we change the sound. Mm -hmm. A maple guitar doesn't sound like an alder guitar. Right. It doesn't sound like a rosewood guitar, right? right? right, right. So the function of that tone would 
ideally should be able to change so that we can change the sound. Mm -hmm. But the form of most guitars doesn't allow it. Mm -hmm. So to accomplish this, this guitar maker, Uli Teufel from Germany, moves that string energy down into what we call the fish here, carved from solid aluminum. Sorry, a lot of people have touched this today during the event, very <laughs> fingerprinty. Um, but aluminum, because it transmits energy well, but doesn't color it. Yeah. So we're going to move that string energy through to these two tone bars. We're now going to intentionally color the sound. These two tone bars are maple. So we're really? coloring it with maple. And obviously covered with something, though. They're covered with paint that has an epoxy mix in it so that the satin doesn't sheen up over time. Yeah. Okay. But with two screws, I can pull off that half of the maple mass and put on an alder bar, bar which comes in the case. Mm -hmm. So I've just changed half of my wood mass to alder, which is slower mm -hmm. and warmer in its sound. Mm -hmm. If I change them both all to alder, we get that classic sort of warm sound. If you change the maple, it's faster, it's cleaner, it's tighter, all the things you expect to happen with maple. Mm -hmm. It proves the function of the wood. I've heard many people on forums talk about electric guitars. The wood doesn't mean anything. It's all about the pickups. Yeah. It's just not true. Yeah. And this proves it. Wow. From here, after we change the, t the, uh, the tone with the wood, mm -hmm. the next part is the output stage with the pickups. And again, pickups, humbuckers, single coils, if it's a humbucker, is it hot wound, is it underwound? All of these things make an effect on the guitar. There's right. so many pickup companies out there. I mean, Seymour Duncan, I think, has hundreds, maybe even thousands of options, being the yeah. biggest pickup company. Um, and each one of those pickups has a different sound to it. If you could change the pickup, again, that would be right. part of the necessary function of the guitar that most forms of the guitar don't allow for. Therefore, the form is inhibited in the function. Yeah. So in this case, Uli Teufel made a pickup, which is very easy to swap out. It's a simple thumb screw, comes right off, eighth and inch jack. Oh I've removed goodness. a pickup, just wow. like that. Wow, obviously a proprietary pickup. You couldn't just put a standard. That's uh, right, Uli makes everything, including the stainless steel screws in this guitar because he couldn't find any of a high enough quality. <laughs> that is, uh, what it takes sometimes to be a boutique guitar maker and see the vision through. Yeah. Now, once you have that pickup there, I've never done it on this particular weird angle with a camera pointed at me, um, <laughs> but it normally only takes me a moment to stick it back in there. And there so you we can go. Adjust, uh, moving along that aluminum bar, you can adjust where that pickup is, is, exactly. is listening to the string and so all that. So we can move it here, we can move it there, we can change the angle. We can change the height by just tightening it up there. If you move a pickup a 64th of an inch in this direction, it sounds brighter. Yeah. 64th the other direction, it sounds warmer. Yeah. And if the pickup, to be able to get a different sound, is a necessary part of the function of a guitar, mm -hmm. it means that most forms get in the way of the function. Yeah. So you should be able to move those pickups to wherever you want them to dial in what you want. Mm -hmm. And so in order to do that, Uli had to move the wood mass out of the way of the pickups, which is why it's over here, mm -hmm. so that you can get the pickup functioning exactly right. From there, we go out to a five-way blade, a volume and a tone. You can position it closer if you're a Strat player and need to roll <laughs> in. I'm not. I'm clumsy. I turn them down when I get too excited, yeah. and so I have to push it out of my way. So you wonder, how does this sound? Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds incredible because the guitar is no more, no less than what it must be. Yeah. It's not just a fancy design guitar. This is one of the most functional instruments that I've ever made. Wow. Form follows function piece. He's a, he's a German maker. German maker. Um, how, uh, we have a question. Pat is asking, how much yes. does it weigh? Oh. It doesn't seem to be. You tell me, Steve. <laughs> oh, n not... Uh, not all that different from a regular guitar. Yeah. It's kind of weighted a little bit different than a standard guitar would be, th with the weight being in the back here. But actually, now that I put it on my lap, it's not diving. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel really any different. Perfectly balanced. It is perfectly balanced. Now yeah. I get to do in that. Yeah. Wow. What a. It feels like a normal guitar. Yeah. Absolutely. And amazing. it sounds amazing because it's neither no more nor less than what it must be. Yeah. 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 Now, are these instruments in the collection? Are they for sale? Yes. Are they? So if folks wanted to learn more about this or any other particular instrument, how would they, where would they need to go to do that? Is that on the Boutique Guitar Showcase website, these individual instruments? They can go to BoutiqueGuitarShowcase.com. While we're on tour, all of our retailers have all of the pricing and such. 
um, for these guitars and the specs for them yeah. also. You come to one of our events, which you can find on Facebook or Instagram also. Again, just Boutique Guitar Showcase. Yeah. Easy to find. Yeah. I've appreciated y'all at uh, the NAMM shows. Yes. And it is one of the most fascinating things that we view at NAMM is this area of creativity mm -hmm. uh, of these uh, builders and innovators and just what they can do with the instrument. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Uh, well, this would be uh, <laughs> a guitar by Enrico Di Donato, mm -hmm. a, a, a maker out of actually, Venice. Who actually um, touched base with me on Instagram today. Did he? Yes. Okay. I, re I remember that name. Yeah. Enrico's uh, a great guy. He's making a guitar that's a suspended arch top. So this guitar is an arch top guitar where I don't know if we can sort of get that or not, but all of the components of this guitar are actually attached directly to the aluminum frame on the back. Um, but the only thing that's putting pressure on the wood is the bridge right here, the downward pressure. The strings are mounted into the frame, the pickups mounted into the frame, the electronics, the neck, all of it are mounted just into the frame of the into guitar. Wow. Absolutely amazing. So this one in particular has obviously some gold features, some real Murano glass uh, on the, uh, the side dots here. I don't know if you'll <laughs> see that on your camera. It's a, it's a wonderful piece out of Venice, Italy. Venice, Italy. Now, yeah. are these... I mean, I could plug one of these in and, of course and you could. play it. Let me, let's try this. We have, I've got my cable here. We'll need to. Now we're reaching back here. All right, Johnny. Wow. Now, so, and so this is controlling... It's a volume and a tone, and he puts a special, really high-quality, hi-fi capacitors, different one depending on the guitar and what he's trying to get the sound out of. What a beautiful tone out of it. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Johnny. Sure. Now, Beautiful instrument. they're not all really outrageously different guitars. Some of them are much more sort of close to center, as I would call it. Mm -hmm. This guitar here is from Alejandro Ramirez, a Spanish maker from the village of Almeria. Now, mm -hmm. Almeria is where Antonio Torres came from. So the modern guitar mm -hmm. is coming from the village of Almeria. Mm -hmm. And I love showing Anto uh, Alejandro's work because, one, he's an amazing, unique, world-class guitar maker. But just the conversation that exists around the fact that the guitar has come so far from within this one little micro-geographical little space. Yeah. And so this modern electric guitar with a set neck in it you know, oh made gosh, from it, yeah. beautiful uh, California redwood and, and ash, uh, that this instrument with a bird's eye maple fretboard and the uh, the sign of, of the city of Almeria. Can you, can you get that, Johnny, on that, that shot right there of that? Yeah. How gorgeous that is? Uh, that you see the evolution of the guitar right within the one little micro sort of geography. And so it's not always about the innovation of the guitar maker or the unusual features. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the story and yeah. behind it and what they're doing. Of course, they all have to be great instruments, yeah. and this is uh, no difference. In this case, it's a wonderful guitar maker. Um, and then flip around so we can see the inlay on the back there. Can Look at that. That is just phenomenal work. Yeah. We were here a little bit earlier, and uh, uh, Greg Voros and, and some of the guitar, guitar techs from... Uh, Grooms were down here just looking at these amazing instruments and uh, really getting blown away. Now this one from Torzel, which is out of Austin, Texas, applies a 35 degree natural twist. Did you sight down the neck of this, Steve? Oh, wow. <laughs> so the guitar stresses How the human body work? quite a bit because our hands really aren't meant to bend our wrists up like this. Uh, or down like this. And so in this case, the, the body is twisting away, um, and so it's in a more natural position for the left hand, and then twisted towards you in a more natural position for the right hand. 
as a very comfortable instrument to play. It looks like it, but it, it's almost like an optical illusion as you look down it to to see that yeah. this is never going to come across on camera. I'm so sorry. There's 35 degrees of twist there. It is, it is a significant twist. All right, Johnny. Yeah. All right, we're going to try this. Can we get can we get a shot of that looking at the twist down this instrument? Yeah. Can you see that? Uh, the calculations involved to get those frets right without buzzing and yes. is is impressive. Yeah. What a and but that's true, hands, especially oh yeah. Right? It feels quite comfortable. Yeah. And that's the purpose. Yeah. Stop thinking about it. Just play it and you'll realize, wow. Wow. Yeah. It really feels, it makes you wonder why other pl makers don't do that because you're true. It, it does. Well, it's a lot risk. more complicated. <laughs> yeah. And you have to find musicians who are open-minded enough to consider something that they have not considered before. Yeah. So... Uh, we had one question that as you're as you're getting switched over. Yes. Neil uh, from Toronto is asking, yes. do you have any guitars by Linda Manzer? I do not. I know Linda. I live not far from her, actually. I'm a Canadian myself. Really? Uh, and Linda makes wonderful instruments. Certainly is one of the legendary guitar makers. Mm -hmm. uh, her most famous guitar, for those who have not looked up, Linda is the, uh, uh, oh my goodness, I just forgot. I had it in my head a second ago. The Picasso guitar that she built for Pat Metheny which you might have seen an acoustic guitar with necks coming off in all sort of different directions. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. Uh, and even even Pat's regular six-string acoustic guitars, Linda makes also. And, and she actually studied with uh, Jimmy DeQuisto, mm -hmm. uh, one of the legends of archtop making in New York. Yeah. Um, Linda's a, a wonderful guitar maker. Um, and i um, proud to know her, but uh, she has not been a part of the Bougie Guitar Showcase at this point. Now, as is, um, now where's home for you? Canada? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Canada. Toronto? Or not, not really. I live somewhere between Toronto and, and Ottawa. Okay. In the middle of nowhere, on a <laughs> lake in a little cottage. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It sounds yeah. wonderful. Tell us about this incredible uh, instrument. Yeah, what is this? This is a Skytop guitar, another American builder who is moving all of his sound ports to the side of the instrument. And this guitar I consider to be a total immersion experience. For those who mostly play for themselves, this guitar directs all of that sound right up at you. Whereas... Often acoustic guitar players, especially performers, when we're trying a guitar, we have to have someone else listen to it out there because guitars really project forward. Mm -hmm. um, and this guitar, of course, has good forward projection, but also gives you that experience that normally only happens forward at your face. Honestly, it's a bit uh, disorienting at first because we're not used to getting all of that bass towards our face. It's like a bit like playing with a subwoofer sometimes. And uh, you should really experience that for yourself for a second here. <laughs> Wow, it's really, you, it's, an, wow. As I said, disorienting at first. It's <laughs> that is, it's like if you had your ear right in front of the guitar, yeah. which is a vantage point that we never have. does freak you out that it's coming like this yeah. but you know we realize that most guitar players are actually playing for self-enjoyment they're not really performing all the time for it and that maybe this is a perspective that people need to consider more as having a guitar that really is meant for you the performer to hear as opposed to the audience yeah so it's a interesting perspective what a fascinating instrument wow yeah amazing yes <coughs> so here we have something, again, uh, much closer to center. Uh, this is Wide Sky Guitars from Taos, New Mexico. And this guitar is, uh, uh, Patch Rubens is a bit living the, uh, the dream right now because he's made this guitar obviously inspired by Roots Americana. Mm -hmm. um, and he was listening to a lot of Gary Clark Jr. when he made this guitar. Yeah. Well, a few months ago, he brought this guitar to a Gary Clark Jr. show and said, it's been really good for my career. I've sold a lot of these guitars and I was inspired by your music and I just mm -hmm. wanted to give you a gift as a thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, Gary played it for 80% of his songs that night. 
kept wow. waving his guitar tech off. Wow. Uh, and then he's finished the rest of his tour. He's been on the road for months now playing his Wide Sky for the majority of every song, and he's ordered another two guitars. And that's what a guitar maker often really dreams about, about having a, yeah. a famous guitar player pick up your instrument and feel so inspired. Um, right. That uh, that it's it's happened. It's, he's living the dream. Wow. <laughs> and, and this is out of Taos, New Mexico. Taos, New Mexico. Wow. Yeah. Regular, regular uh, tuning pick. Tuning yeah, it's up there. very traditional. It's mahogany body. It's a it's a maple top on it, a pair of arcane P90s on it, a trapeze tail bridge, which I guess isn't as common on a guitar like this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a wonderful piece mm -hmm. that uh, is for someone who's not looking for something quite as unusual as what some of the other pieces we showed are. Let's see if it's tuned up. I'll let's plug it in. And uh, uh, Ron was asking, I believe it was on the bass that they had all of the knobs. Uh, those five knobs, I assume those are for different pickup combinations and whatnot that we were looking at. Yeah, it's an active preamp in it. And so, you know, it has a, a bass mid treble. <laughs> The P90s always have problems here at Groons with the uh, lights, yeah, yeah. with the old light <laughs> fixtures. A little bit of a buzz that has nothing to do with this guitar. That is a buzz we have fought for years. Well, speaking of pickups, this new guitar by Wild Customs, the Gyrock, allows you to rotate your actual pickup on a three-way selector. <laughs> so we now have a humbucker in the bridge. Now it's a traditional single coil or like a quarter pounder by Seymour Duncan. Up here, the same sort of thing. Uh, you can just rotate through them. It allows you to really change your tone on the instant, in the fly, in the song. Uh, and then the guitar actually comes with many pickups, and they're super easy to change. Contacts are right there. Anything that Seymour Duncan makes in a single coil sizing, uh, which could be like a little 59 or mm -hmm. classic Strat sort of sound, whatever it happens to be, it just goes in just like that. Super easy. And, and you can change it on the fly. You can even move them manually if you'd like. This is done in collaboration with uh, one of the biggest watch resellers in the world, and they released a watch by Hublot, the uh, the friend, uh, mm -hmm. the Swiss company out mm -hmm. of Geneva. Mm -hmm. uh, Hublot did a Wild Customs watch as well to celebrate the release of this guitar. Uh, <laughs> wild. And so then, and this is just determining jumping That's between the different three-way selector, okay. two volumes and a tone between the, all those different types of pickups. Yeah. And so there, it can go through three different pickups on each. Three different pickups loaded in, in each cylinder, but of course you can choose what those three pickups are. Function. Yeah. yeah. Function. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it truly does make you think, as a guitarist, we are really limited. We are really limited in, in pickup combinations and uh, um, some of these various issues that, that, that these uh, makers are addressing. Yeah. Amazing. This one here by Villa Mengstrom out of Sweden uh, is, again, another very traditional sort of Americana to Spire guitar, um, but with very clean Scandinavian design. I love the mixture of it because it's very believable mm -hmm. as far as the sort of dirty, you know, Mississippi Delta sort of feel. Yeah, yeah. And then you flip it over and it's got this really hard oh. V neck in it, but beautifully, masterfully crafted. You know, the part where you come in contact mm -hmm. feels totally luxurious. Yeah. You know, but yet the look has that sort of classic sort of dirty look to it. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's an amazing instrument. And so this, oh, heavy. With well, the, with it, the is, metal. It, is, yeah, yeah. it is metal, right? Sorry, you guys out there can't hear. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then you can add the pickups to it as well. Wow. Yes. Amazing. 
So here's a guitar that is looks very modern, but is actually a very old design uh, by Steve Klein, sort of the forefather of avant-garde guitar design. Steve has been making guitars for over 50 years now. This guitar was made famous most about Alan Holdsworth. If right, right. those I've of us who are old enough yeah, to remember yeah. Alan Holdsworth. Um, and this is sort of a bit of a modern sort of variation of it. But we view guitars in this vertical or horizontal position for some reason. Mm -hmm. But we play them at 35 degrees. This guitar oh, is built true. at the 35 degree angle. The only parts that are here are the necessary parts for the guitar to interact with your body. Extremely comfortable, very resonant. This one happens to be made from Redwood. Steve's from uh, Northern California. Well, lives in Northern California. He's not born there, but he's been there for many decades now. All right. But over the years, you would have seen, you know, early days, uh, Joe Walsh and Joni Mitchell and Steve, uh, Steve Miller, all sorts of people have fine guitars. <laughs> comfortable to play like that. Wow. And it's light. Super light. Very light. Yeah, but yet well balanced. Yeah, I mean it doesn't feel, it feels quite comfortable. You wouldn't yeah. think as, as odd of a shape as it is. Yeah. Yeah. How many of these do you want to go through? Uh, hey, okay, well we're at, we're at a, a break. <laughs> well, let's do, let's give something away. Um, while we're here, uh, we are about halfway through. Wow, this is an amazing uh, experience to see all of these. I would encourage you to get onto uh, their Instagram page, and uh, which you have so many pictures of these glorious instruments yes. there, and get on their website, boutiqueguitarshowcase.com, and um, check out these amazing instruments. If they're going to be in your area, what are some of the cities that you're coming to in the, in the tour? Sure. So our next stops are Atlanta, uh, Charlotte, Miami, Birmingham, Memphis. And then we head over into Texas, both in Dallas and Austin, before we cross the desert to Tucson, Vegas, L.A., and San Francisco. Then over to Europe. And then over to Europe for... for nine, nine countries in Europe. If you yeah. happen to be anywhere near these cities, um, go onto their website, figure out where they're at, and uh, do yourself a favor, and get a little treat of seeing these amazing instruments. Uh, they are incredible. Let's let's give something away. We're gonna give away one of the guitars. No, we're not. I was, I know that's what y'all want. I know that's what you want, <laughs> but we're not gonna do that. Hey, I found this. This is a great little uh, reference thing, a uh, map of the major keys for guitar. We picked this up at, uh, I think, one of the, uh, publishers had this and it's a really cool little reference thing for all of the different uh, keys for guitar so someone is about to win this the winner of this is Jeff Kenyon Jeff you have won this really handy dandy um, major key map for uh, guitar send me your information Jeff at service at mightyoakmusic.com and we will get this out to you send me your, your what you won and your mailing address and things like that and we will we will get it out to you a um, couple things we need to announce here while we're kind of taking a little bit of a, of, of a break. We have got our guitargathering.com, our community there. If you have not yet signed up for the Guitar Gathering community, it's completely free. And it's a, it's a place where guitar lovers can gather. We talk about um, um, instruments, gear. We talk about lessons. And we're, there's a chat going on over there all the time. And if you haven't... If, checked into that yet please check it out we've got articles and downloads and all kinds of things over there check it out guitargathering.com also we have our fall finger style re guitar retreat that's coming up in uh, october october 33rd, 31st through november 3rd we've we've already sold almost all the slots i think we've got like five left um, international finger style champion don ross is going to be with us We've got uh, Ian Ethan Case is going to be with us, and Candy Rat Records artist Van Larkins. All of these have been on the show except for Don Ross, so I'm looking forward to meeting Don. If you're interested, check it out at fingerstyleretreat.com. Um, the early registration price for that is ending, so if you're hesitating, uh, September 1st, it's going to go up 100 bucks. So if you're interested, check it out, fingerstyleretreat.com and uh, get in before the early registration price uh, ends here in a few days. So you've only got five more days for that. 
Um, it, that's a cool event. You're sitting on couches, big leather couches, 15 feet away from some of the greatest fingerstyle players on the planet. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool vibe. Uh, everything's included, all the lodging, all the meals, so we're all there together. Another thing to check out, we did put up our, our summer conference for next year, Guitar Gathering 2020. You can go to guitargathering2020.com and uh, check that out. Uh, the guests haven't been lined up yet because we're 10 months out from it or whatever, but um, you can still sign up for the conference at the early registration price as well. So check that out, guitargathering2020.com. If you're one of the first 10 people to sign up, uh, you get a free baseball hat, I think, guitar gathering baseball hat. So there you go. Um, check it out. Um, we, I wanted to mention last week's live lesson, which was fantastic. I wish you could have seen it. It was great. We had problems getting the stream out last week, so, uh, but we ended up recording the lesson, and it was one of the best ones we've done in a long time with singer-songwriter Rob Harris from here in Nashville. And uh, it is being edited now and actually should be up by... Uh, tomorrow night. We've had a bunch of problems editing it, but it was such good content. We've worked those out, and it should be up by tomorrow night. So um, be looking for that. That was a, ended up being a really, really great one. So even though we didn't, weren't able to stream it, we did record it. So there you go. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I need to announce right now. Oh, um, before we broadcasted tonight, we donated a guitar to... Um, SOAR, the Sounds of Acoustic Recovery Music Therapy for Vets program. One of our wonderful uh, guitar gathering family, Peg from North Carolina, had donated a brand new Strat and uh, wanted it to go to a good home, and we couldn't think of a better place to do it than Sounds of Acoustic Recovery. If, you want, if you're interested in learning about some of their music therapy that they do with soldiers, you know, music helps bring them back, and some of the results that they're getting um, rival that. Uh, of medicine for PTSD and some of, and, and other conditions that these vets are coming back with. It's a tremendous music therapy program. And uh, anyway, if you would like to donate to SOAR, uh, you can go to soarforvets.com and get all the information. We haven't had our SOAR guys on in a while, and they weren't able to stay to be on camera tonight, but uh, we love them. And they, they have been back here uh, numerous times with us, and uh, it's a great organization. Check them out. They're doing a lot of good Good work there. All right. Hey, let's see some more guitars. We got them lined well, up here. Since you're doing finger style so much that maybe I know this guitar was designed with some a number of finger style players in mind. Uh, Donovan Lee, this company was about comfortable luxury, a guitar that uh, was luxurious but yet uh, simple, beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, and very responsive. The finish on this guitar mm -hmm. only binds the wood fiber but yet it was developed in Belgium and has a 20-year warranty for walking on as a floor finish. <laughs> and so a lot of fingerstyle players want to be able to yeah, touch yeah, and yeah. feel the wood. Mm -hmm. Super strong, mm -hmm. very responsive, um, very light. Yeah, That's yeah, Donovan yeah. Lee. And let's, so Let's see if I can... Gallop. What a great sounding guitar. It feels very pretty. I mean, it, it looks pretty, but it feels great. The, the yeah. finish on it is just amazing. So one of the things they wanted was actually that you would want to linger with the touch of this yeah. guitar. Yeah. You know? I mean, it, it's, the, it's the touch of the neck, and it does, it does feel very comfortable. Yeah. And the finish, I mean, it's not, it's not glossy like a regular finish that would have. It's just, you can tell it's not covering it very much. It's laying, allowing the wood to do to resonate. Yeah. What a great instrument. But yet you can literally Yeah, yeah. It's got it still has the texture. Do all I guess the that's things what I'm, that uh, it on on a on a standard guitar, the finish would be more glassy, it's more smooth. Yes. This still you're able to to have the grain of the wood in it which yeah. gives it a little bit more um, uh, texture to to that. Yeah. Beautiful. A shout out to one of my uh, 
Canadian finger style friends, Minnelli Jamal. Oh, yeah. uh, I've worked a lot with Minnelli. I actually designed his Cole Clark signature guitar mm -hmm. you know, from a previous life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he takes his nail and sort of does this across the guitars. Yeah. And uh, most guitars can't do that. I've even seen finger style guys put a piece of raw spruce on it just so they can get that just sound. Just so they can get the sound of the and texture. And so yep. a strong finish, but yet you can do those things with this. My staff actually has all their hands full. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, a very different, stunning, beautiful guitar from Brian Gallup at Gallup Studios. Um, Brian is not only a, uh, a world-class uh, luthier, he's a very innovative luthier. He consults for a lot of the biggest companies in the world, and he also has one of the top guitar schools in the world. Mm -hmm. And so other major guitar players, uh, sorry, guitar makers like Michael Greenfield, Isaac Zhang, Megan Wells, uh, all came at one point in time through the Gallup School of Luthery. And, uh, and so it's a, it's a really special piece. The, uh, the inlay work, that the quality finish, everything about this guitar is fantastic. And it's definitely worth, uh, while well you have that acoustic mic open in front of you, uh, a play on that piece there. Um, Greg, uh, when I came in this morning, or this afternoon, Greg Voros, uh, was looking at this particular one going, this is amazing. Yeah. The, the craftsmanship for all of this. That's not a painting, this. that's inlay. It is actually inlay right yeah. there. Can you get a good shot of that, Johnny? Absolutely stunning inlay. And this, the, uh, the attention to detail right up here with the, uh, the stripes and the, and the uh, coming around there on the neck. Incredible. And let me flip it over. Can you see all of that in the back? Yeah. You can tell this is someone who cares deeply about their about their work. Let's see. just saw one of your comments from somebody who talks about as if Frank Lloyd Wright had a hand in this. And I can tell you this was actually indeed inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's work. Really? As a matter of fact, Brian and his team, Gallup Studios, uh, did a Frank Lloyd Wright inspired piece called The Mission for a show I curated during Miami Art Week, Art, uh, Art Basel Miami, uh, back last December. Uh, a very special piece and it had a lot of these same sort of ins inspirations, sort of nouveau deco. Beautiful. Yeah. Stunning. Stunning. Let's give the bass players some love. <laughs> <laughs> Sheldon Dingwall, this is uh, now a legendary bass. It looks super modern, but he's been one of the first people to really be pushing the multi-scale instrument. A lot of people have questions about multi-scale or fan frets. Yep. Really the thinking here is that each tonal range has an ideal size or string or even size of body to produce that sound. So mm -hmm. the easiest way to imagine it is that a violin versus a viola, a cello, and a contrabass, mm -hmm. um, each one has its ideal size to produce that sound. Now you take that thinking and you bring it into a, a, a micro scale, and you'll recognize that each string should likely have a slightly different scale length, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of very modern players like instruments like this, but for those with great ears, we can talk about uh, Leland Sklar, who's one of the yeah. most recorded yeah. bass players in history. I mean, everything that James Taylor ever did, Jackson Brown, all of Phil Collins stuff. Yeah. Uh, we've all grown up uh, listening to Lee Sklar, and Lee Sklar's been playing Dingwall Fives for, I don't know, 20 years or mm. more, and he really talks about the clarity of that low B string. And so this is really a wonderful instrument. Those three pickups there, mm -hmm. uh, what's really happening here is there's a rotary switch that gives us the possibility of moving through all of the classic pickup configurations. So you can use these as the jazz pickups. Oh, you know, okay. the bridge okay. or both. You can use a section of this one and this one as a P bass. Mm -hmm. Or these two will come on together as an M. 
Wow. You know, and so really it, it's a super versatile instrument yeah. and mother, many other uh, variations in between. Uh, one of the highest quality instruments in the, on the planet, really. I love Sheldon Dingwall's work uh, out of um, Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. that province in Canada that, we, that many people look at the name and go, I, I give <laughs> up before saying it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, incredible piece. We love having the opportunity to show Sheldon Dingwall's work. Uh, and this base is on tour with us uh, all throughout the world. Wonderful. So Amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's go with this one. The story's super fascinating here. This one is celebrating the wow. 500th anniversary of Leonardo da Vinci. Paoletti out of Italy. Um, Paoletti always makes the guitars out of wine casks, Chianti wine casks, at least 150 years old. Now, the da Vinci family have always been winemakers. Leonardo is actually the guy who figured out how to get the water up the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very innovative and very much into wine. Um, and their family is still making wine. And they mm -hmm. found these casts, which are more than 350 years old, uh, chestnut Chianti casts that they made. They had enough just to make these 10 guitars out of. I believe this is number two. We actually sold the first one at Summer Nam. Um, the pattern that you're seeing that's... Uh, that's burned into this piece mm -hmm. here is uh, Il Gio, which is uh, the lily, the lily of Florence, um, or Firenze in Italian. Uh, Florence is the region where Vinci, Leonardo of Vinci, mm -hmm. is, and they're governed by them. So this actually comes with a certificate of authenticity from the governor of, uh, of Florence as well. Uh, inlaid olive wood uh, oh on wow. this piece here. Really wonderful, limited to, uh, to only 10 pieces available. Uh, price tag on that one is twenty thousand. I did see someone was asking about prices here. Yeah, yeah. The the prices at the show uh, range from about two thousand dollars all the way up to seventy five thousand dollars. This one here is um, happens to be twenty thousand yeah. uh, dollars. John, if we can get a shot of this neck, what an incredible! Do I need to turn it down? Is that uh, uh, it's out of frame there? <laughs> Just amazing inlay work on that yeah gorgeous okay gorgeous Whew. Uh, on uh, the home stretch what do we want to do here we Steve, got give me gonna... give me a few more all right let's give him another acoustic i don't feel like we've got a lot of acoustic love in here so far <laughs> uh here's another uh, canadian maker actually dion uh dion james incredible instrument what i love about dion is his mastery of line Mm -hmm. He says so much with so little. That headstock, it's super plain, yeah. but yet makes a great statement. Yes. The lines of the guitar in every aspect. Um, he's building in a, in a not very traditional way. Steve, if you take a look inside there, mm -hmm. you'll notice there's no bracing on the back. There's oh. no bracing on the sides. That is uh, right. He is doing a much thicker side um, so that you don't have to add any lining on it. But that's actually not really the reason for doing it. A stiffer side activates more of the top. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting about, let's say, 75% movement up here, contrary to what you might think, by making a thicker side, you'll actually activate more of the top, not less of the top, mm. by moving that in. And so he's got a fairly thick side there that activates more of that top and the uh, the back is also laminated so it doesn't need any bracing on the back of it there uh you really should throw that in front of the microphone it's a lovely sounding <laughs> guitar <laughs> oh wow the neck back here i don't know whether we can get a shot of that it has no taper in it that is really handy for those of us who play higher up on the neck that we got to do it do it like that let's see Beautiful. 
and then we'll show you just maybe one or two more guitars Please. here. And then yep, we'll yep, yep. So uh, for the uh, people who prefer the, the modern guitar here, the, a little bit more metal, um, the story is fascinating here. It's actually a husband and wife team from Russia, mm -hmm. Simon and Daria Padelka. Mm -hmm. um, she's an architect. So he was in architect school also. They went to architecture school together, but he went more towards the design of the guitar. She practiced architecture and was a professor in the university for a while mm -hmm. and eventually joined him in the business. And uh, she's now doing a lot of their design work. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is a fascinating part of the guitar. I spend a, a fair amount of my time pursuing the points of intersection with the creative disciplines. Mm -hmm. So whether we're talking about the fine arts, uh, architecture, fashion design, all of these different parts as to how the guitar is influenced because the guitar has become an icon of contemporary culture. Yeah. It, everyone in Western culture has a relationship with the guitar. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily with the flugelhorn or a bassoon, right. but we have a feeling about a guitar. Yeah. Um, and so it's used in advertising. Uh, it's, it's used. My wife got an advertisement for a mushroom tea that had a guitar in the background. Yeah. Why? It, it, it's not in the tea, it, but it's it, there to evoke a feeling. To evoke a feeling. I've, it's gotten to be a thing with uh, me and my wife. I'll just be walking through a room, and you just if they want to convey as a marketing image a sense of relax or fun mm -hmm. or, or, or youthfulness or something, it doesn't matter what they're selling. There's a guitar in the background. Yeah. Community. Is, community, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Cool. Uh, so... Uh, in this case, I love that intersection point of architecture. And so at the Winter NAM show this year, Simon and Daria Padalka are making a special installation that uh, talks about architecture and, and the guitar. Because mm -hmm. I always commission four different guitar makers to do, it has been an art installation piece, but this year I'll have two uh, architectural companies, one from Milan, Italy at Noah Guitars and Padalka out of Russia. And so it's an interesting conversation piece. Uh, Beautiful. Track with us further to see more about that. Yes, yes. Yeah, and then let's go one last piece that's a little more traditional overall. This mm -hmm. got a lot of attention here today at Grunes uh, from Diego Villa out of Madrid, uh, Spain. Diego fell in love with rock and roll and 50s music and fashion. He still wears black horn rim glasses and has slicked back hair, and he's all the way over there in Madrid. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much a part of their culture in the same way. He's actually from Argentina originally. Yeah. Um, but it's very clear here that he loves all things to do with that sort of early sort of rock and roll eras. Yeah. Uh, all of his guitar models are named after a classic silver screen movie stars. This is the Greta. <laughs> for obvious reasons, yes. uh, both with Greta Garbo, but also it references the American Gretsch guitars. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so the, very Gretsch. the Greta yeah. uh, sort of combination, but yet it's an offset bolt-on guitar. It's not really much like a Gretsch guitar at all. It just references it. It's sort of the influence of the modern guitar and American culture in other parts of the world. And let's talk about that. And it's just such a fun guitar, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can I play it? it? Yeah, of course. All right, Johnny. Time. L H L H T. <laughs> One last one to finish it off, Please. I think. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed your uh, your penchant for moving towards uh, jazz chordings and voicings <laughs> and such. <laughs> this is uh, LHT Guitars, which has been one of our lead promotional images because it's such a beautiful what a gorgeous. instrument. Isn't it? 
Uh, this is Tyler Wells out of California. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been one of Tom Rebecca's uh, apprentices. Mm -hmm. Rebecca being a very famous world-class art shop maker. Oh, yeah. This looks nothing like a Rebecca guitar. It's taken it totally in his own direction here. He's learned all the skills from the master and has now come out with a real voice and image of his own. Yeah. Uh, we love the work that Tyler's doing. We're super excited to have him on the Boutique Guitar Showcase Tour. You know, and great little details like taking that is a fascinating. burled maple, which is uh, basically rotting. It looks beautiful, but you have to stabilize it. And so he's stabilizing uh, the maple, uh, the burl, and then dyeing it. And the, the the choice of colors, you know, it's a very thin body, uh, beautiful woods, <laughs> excellent execution all around. Uh, just love this. The name on this, the fugue, uh, which of if for those of you who aren't familiar, a fugue is a layering of melodies. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, Tyler's. Um, shapes mm -hmm. he's layering shapes mm -hmm. so he has the one very sort of top modern shape but he follows it the more classic shape here that sort of mm -hmm. gives you a feeling of comfort and sensibility mm -hmm. uh, and he's layered these two ideas these two uh, melodies um, mm -hmm. on top of each other and i think that you should have a chance to sure. to, to try out this wonderful uh, lht fugue you know there's some days that i really like what i do and this is one of them where we get to play <laughs> All these amazing, amazing instruments. Our volume and tone here on the. Oh, underneath. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you. This instrument <laughs> this is beautiful, Isn't beautiful. Thank you so much. This is one of these guys that you're going to see skyrocket. This yeah. guitar is 6,500 right now, yeah. but I'm very sure that these will be 15,000 not so long from now. He's just releasing his own guitars, uh, you know, not Tom or Becky's stuff. He still works with Tom, yeah. uh, but he's stepping out and all the luthiers around the world are paying attention to what he's doing. That he's he's going to be one of the greats. I think I'm, wow. I'm sure of it. Wow! So, thank you, Jamie, for um, showing us, taking taking some time and showing us these amazing instruments and what can be uh, done with guitar. It's kind of opening my mind a little bit about mm. uh, what guitar, what the possibilities of the instrument are, and I guess that's the purpose of it all. Yeah, it's exactly it. Yeah. I think we still have a lot more to discover about guitar than what we actually know. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, my my saying, my sort of uh, life phrase, if you will, and business phrase is that I love where we've been. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about where we're going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Thank so you so much. Thank you. Appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you taking time to be with us. Wow. Um, Thank you guys for joining us on a Monday night. Keep up the great work in your uh, own learning. Wanted to thank our crew tonight for this special Monday night edition. Uh, Johnny, who's been running around turning on amps and, and running cameras down, and Stephen, who's been handing, handling the chat and producing tonight, and our wonderful moderators, Doug and Neil. Um, appreciate what all of you bring to our, our wonderful guitar family. Keep up your work in learning how to play Playing music's a great thing, and uh, it's a great family to be a part of. So keep up the great work. We will not see you guys next week. I'm going to be in Spokane, Washington. So if you're in the Spokane area, um, shoot me an email at uh, service at Mighty Oak Music, and maybe we can get together for a lesson while I'm up there uh, working with a men's uh, group up there. But after that, in two weeks, which I believe is like September 10th-ish, um, we will be back on for another great live lesson and another great month of live lessons next month. So take care. We'll see you guys next time.